Hello ladies and gents, welcome to a new night point of view review. In front of us is the new Renault Clio facelift. So if I use my uh, key remote, you can turn on the lights and you can see beautiful new front uh, redesigned LED headlights, still with the projectors, cold LED lights, beautiful uh, new signature as well. Now, uh, turn this off with the remote. If I approach with a key fob, it should unlock. And then you can see that the uh, uh, brightness illumination kind of increases and then uh, if I leave uh, they it decreases but if I come back uh, the car will unlock eventually you can see that uh, so uh, to show the profile new signature also uh, I do love uh, how that looks from the side uh, and then the back end uh, let me just once again approach the car so it unlocks automatically and the, the brightness on the back increases when you lock it uh, fades out uh, same LED taillights but uh, transparent now so like Lexus lights uh, the lines stand out a little bit more and then if you unlock you can see the turn signal so the whole uh, frame here it, it has this red shine and then when you use the turn signal uh, yellow as well cargo space uh, same uh, for a small city hatchback decent uh, warm light in the back uh, all the same um, let's jump on the driver's seat and head out so this is the uh, e-sprite alpine package uh, room for your key fob is here of course and uh, we had a short uh, alpine uh, logo there now, um, I did test the previous E-Tech, so this is the 143 horsepower uh, system horsepower E-Tech. Of course, this is powered by a petrol, uh, four-cylinder turbocharged petrol engine producing 94 horsepower, and then the electric motor is 49. Uh, okay, uh, so the car wants to go in power saving mode because I've uh, had it on a little bit. Let me just mute this. Uh, I had it on for B-roll. Uh, let me just share the lights inside. They uh, fastly went away and I'll show you the Apple CarPlay. Now I'm just gonna lower this fan speed and uh, I'm gonna plug uh, my phone here. So it should uh, show the Apple CarPlay. So I'm not going to use the Apple CarPlay, but you can see it, it's nice. Let me switch these off. So it looks nice uh, and very responsive. Uh, I feel that the screen is now faster. I've said that in my review. Uh, both screens are faster with the animations. I'm not sure if they change uh, the hardware side. I will unplug the phone here and just stay with the basic navigation. Let me increase, uh, excuse me, play the demo on the, on the sound here and I'm gonna increase some music. So uh, the sound is nice and deep. Uh, these are standard speakers. Uh, gonna head to navigation here and uh, put it to uh, drive. So we are. No, I didn't turn on the engine. Actually, I did. See, you forget with the hybrid if it's on or not. Uh, I'm gonna turn it to drive. And uh, you do have a wireless charging here, but I've just left my cable and I, my phone is already fully charged, so no need for that. Uh, what I wanted to show you here once again before we head out um, cameras yeah uh, we have good street lights you can see how the cameras look you can uh, switch to this one this one shows you the angle uh, so very good uh, for uh, the purpose the cameras are not the sharpest resolution but they're decent for uh, you know parking and helping you uh, to park easier and not to curb maybe your alloy Okay, uh, we are in automatic mode, so I'm not forcing EV. I can press here EV, now it is forcing uh, driving in electric, and it drives in electric up to 50 kilometers per hour. Now, uh, for those of you who are regular audience, um, I need to do a little correction at the beginning of the video. Um, this will also be useful for those who are here for the first time. Now, uh, transmission is automatic uh, it's supposed to be zero speed it's uh, linked to electric motor and the petrol motor uh, but uh, no 
not to be too long uh, I've said the last time I like to drive in B because it uh, forces recuperation but that's true but I realized uh, that in Renault and I've uh, also heard in Toyota hybrids this happens as well uh, that they are forcing in the B mode uh, engine so the petrol engine is working and it's generating power to charge the battery uh, but it's also like shifting into lower gears and staying in high revolutions so it's stressing the engine but it's not the problem with the engine it's just that the fact that it is uh, running in high revolutions and spending more fuel so uh, when I had the pre facelift the same spec uh, the hybrid I have uh, afterwards got the car for a short uh, weekend vacation and I went uh, driving from Zagreb to Zadar in B and my fuel consumption uh, was okay but on the way back I decided to drive in D uh, because some people were mentioning that uh, the B mode is actually using the petrol engine and not just increasing the level of recuperation with your brakes or excuse me the electric motor so I realized on the way back that it's true it's spending less fuel uh, and my fuel consumption on that longer trip uh, was uh, around five liters and on the way back it was five actually on the way there was 4.8 the lowest that I got in the city and I'm telling you this because sometimes I don't have the time uh, to drive the car uh, long enough uh, I usually do try to do consumption tests sometimes I don't have the time I'm just adding this information this car is the same underneath it's just a different package uh, same technology now um, coming to the fact that the system horsepower is uh, 143 uh, it's more than enough for this light car it's nice and fast uh, it starts with the electric motor it uses the uh, instant torque acceleration uh, has a lot of momentum and then it switches the petrol uh, and um, honestly now when you're driving in D uh, the car does recuperate a little bit and it's more than enough to charge the battery so that's also uh, quite important uh, I thought if I've uh, driven in B that I'll recuperate more and keep the battery more charged that's just my habit because I'm a Tesla owner I'm used to full regeneration and I wanted more regeneration because I did drive some other hybrid cars uh, that are different that have uh, two levels of recuperation um, but those are actually plug-in hybrids I have an arrow there green so I can go you can see here instant acceleration but once I pass 40 45 42 it switches the petrol engine so this is a the most powerful Clio you can get it's really nice and agile I've already said that in the past uh, review uh, the only thing I personally don't like is the noisy petrol engine once it starts uh, or when it's charging the battery when the battery gets low it's quite noisy but besides that it's okay and then if you're driving in the city you know or a slow speed it switches off it's running on the battery it's nice and quiet uh, the way I personally like it but I think you're gonna also enjoy it so if you're just coming from a petrol engine and then going to hybrid you're not gonna be annoyed by the petrol engine because you're used to that noise but once you go to EV and then you go back to this to a hybrid yeah it's not really the best experience uh, you just you're used to quiet uh, no petrol sound uh, or no engine sound so that's just a difference okay then um, we can see the fuel consumption currently uh, I picked up the car with 50 kilometers I'm uh, probably one of the first who got it and then I gave it to another uh, reviewer he gave it back to me now to do this video um, so the consumption was around 6.7 or 8 I filmed some b-roll it was idling uh, but you can see it's almost close to 7 now I believe if you would keep driving an open road uh, perhaps you would get 5 uh, and maybe in the city six it really depends on your driving style now you can see here I'm driving and then when I let go the car is charging it is recuperating 
and it's a good recuperation um, I'm not in B mode right uh, let me, actually no excuse me I am <laughs> driving in the B I really didn't notice this time but I've now noticed because there is a full recuperation um, so you were supposed to use the B if you're going downhill uh, but you can also you know if use it to if you want to just like uh, slow down faster um, in D you can coast more and it's like good recuperation I'm just gonna speed up and then let it do its thing again see now the recuperation is gentle and you can see the charge here the right bubble the blue it's just getting maybe barely the half of the bubble it's not going all the way so it's like a lot less recuperation but for the most part in the city that's okay and then you can manually go if you want to uh, with a stick shift it to B if you want to recuperate more and then just add a little bit juice to the battery but then you can go back to D but you know in most cases uh, that won't make too much sense you can just keep driving in D and then you just get a feeling my idea was driving with one pedal because that's what I got used to in test line for me it's more natural and I, I like to use that when I have opportunity even in the hybrids now uh, car is very fast the brakes are uh, not over sensitive uh, just uh, on the right spot and the car is nice and fast it's agile and it's very stable on the road even if you go harsher in the bends it just sticks to the road you do have a battery it's a 1.2 kilowatt hour battery um, and it you know it's a little weight that also helps you in the bends so the car is more stable but it's a small car it doesn't really uh, you know slip or the back end doesn't stick or anything like that um, interior wise uh, they've changed the badge here there's no more E symbol on the bottom uh, the E Sprite Alpine has textile here the previous model had that was a top package at the moment then had uh, like a leather that's imitating carbon fiber so I'm not sure if this is like a downgrade or upgrade uh, honestly uh, the seats have if I turn on the light here so the seats have this beautiful leather and then it's textile in the middle uh, which is a nice combo for like a little bit premium feeling and then you have textile which is better in the winter and even in summer you're not sweating uh, or sticking to a hot leather when you come to a car that's fully hot um, yeah but uh, when I had the car on that uh, journey, I was really pleased with the Clio. It's a very nice car uh, for a small compact car, very uh, fuel efficient and decently comfortable. Now I'm saying this because I'm a tall person. This car doesn't have uh, lumbar support, so that's very important if you're a tall person. You have to trust me there. But if you're average size, it doesn't matter maybe uh, as much. Um, I'm just saying this because if I'm not straight uh, and on a longer, longer journeys, I do get lower back pain. So that's why lumbar is quite uh, important for me personally. Now, uh, what else to say here? I think I've said everything. We're going to come up to highway now. now see petrol here loud for me personally. It's like just... I always like engines to be quiet. This I always prefer diesel because of that. I'm not gonna rush this one. Maybe I could have passed, but I just decided not to do it. Yeah, it was a really long uh, yellow light there. Uh, you can see the brakes are good, and yeah, the seats. I also have to say, like the previous model, and I've driven this one for not too much today, but the seats are really great. They have really good bolsters. Let me just turn this on when I'm here. So you can see they have really big balls, especially on the top, which is most important in the bends. And I just love these. I'm not sure if you can see this uh, details that they, they, they added on the leather. Uh, you saw that in the day review, hopefully. Uh, looking amazing. And it's really nice in the bends uh, if you're driving a little faster. Uh, maybe on the open road, you just feel the seats hugging you and it's... Uh, quite good now I'm gonna floor it here to the speed limit yeah it pulls nicely uh, although I forgot I'm in the uh, like the standard driving mode so I'm not gonna go to the 
eco because you know eco is just um, you know for fuel efficiency if you want that uh, if you're you know low on fuel and you think you're not gonna be uh, you're gonna be close to the gas station uh, then you just turn on the eco maybe or if you're in the city and there's a traffic you just you know uh, use the eco there so the car is going forward even if it's slightly uphill because it doesn't fully stop but uh, if you hold down the brake uh, there is auto hold here then you don't have to keep your foot on the brake yeah definitely more responsive in the sport mode uh, these are 17 inch oh I'm actually going through this really horrible manholes and the suspension is quite soft that's what I love about French cars now uh, 17 inches the highest uh, or excuse me yeah the biggest alloy that you can get um, it's like the bus broke down here fortunately in a lane see very agile very fast So this car is really fun to drive. Trust me, you're not gonna regret if you get this uh, hybrid. But uh, yeah, a little uh, fear that everyone has. What about outside of warranty? Well, I don't know, you're gonna sell the car probably. Make it someone else's problem. Okay, I'm flooring it all the way. The performance of the LED headlights is pretty good. It is a uh, moon, uh, it's not full moon, but like was a few days ago. But uh, in person, the performance of the LEDs are uh, amazing. Okay, I'm gonna slow down a bit so you can hear the noise level at 100. Like a rough patch and then a smooth one. Smooth one? Rough? Smooth one? Rough. So, okay, I'm gonna floor it now. Ah, uh, still there's a turbo lag at 120. Yeah, a lot of uh, wind noise coming at 150 from the side mirrors, 130. Ah, uh, slightly wind noise from the A pillars. Uh, excuse me, yeah. Side mirrors mostly, not A pillars. Yeah, uh, display here, you can uh, go to minimal display and then you can have this like dark if you want to be focused on the speedo there. Uh, tap on it, comes back. Navigation is nice and big. Uh, you do have the uh, speed limiter and you have the cruise control. You have the distance. So all the good stuff. So look at this. The lane assist keeps bouncing you. <laughs> it's not keeping you in the middle for some reason. Let me see here. Lane keeping deactivated. There's departure warning. Let me see here now what happens. Oh, yeah, I've already departed the lane. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was like shaking the wheel while I already left the lane, so. Uh, You'll have to keep the lane keeping active. Now it keeps you in the lane. So uh, notice the difference. 
Yeah, you still have to keep the hands on your wheel because otherwise it just bounces you ping pong uh, from left to right. Uh, I like the lane keeping where it just keeps you in the middle without uh, holding the steering wheel, but yeah, it is what it is. Uh, some cars, you know, just ping pong you back. That's what I call it, ping pong. Um, yeah, this is not our exit. The second one is our exit, but I just don't want to rush it here. There's a lorry truck, whatever you call this, in your country in front of me. Um, anyways, I'd say um, an excellent little car. Definitely fun to drive, fuel efficient. I mean, fuel efficiency depends on your driving style, but I'm a gentle person, but on the highway, you know, um, in Croatia we have a speed tolerance and we all drive faster, like 140, 150. Uh, some people drive even faster, but uh, 140, if you're from abroad, a tourist here, you're okay with the police, 150, you might get it. They will try to ticket you, although there is a law in uh, for the speed monitoring system, there's a tolerance, but they will not tell you that because they know you're not going to go to the court and dispute the uh, fine. Uh, but you know, Croatians for us, it's safe to drive 150. The police interceptor will not pull you over, but 160, you're risking it, and then everything about that, you'll get a fine or uh, lose your license for a month. So uh, just have in mind, um, you can drive 140, you know. Uh, so we do drive faster, but considering that, um, you know, my 5 liter fuel consumption without being too gentle and driving in D was like pretty good, you know, for uh, this amount of power in the car. Now, uh, let me just demonstrate, uh, not that, uh, demonstrate speed limiter on. So, but what's the speed? I haven't set the speed, so let's see here. This is... Uh, 80 zone so I can drive 90 yep you heard it right I can drive 90 10 kilometers more that's called freedom baby not uh, United States of America where you can't speed yeah those guys uh, they make money on speeding tickets that's, that's the way they enforce the law and then they create dummy drivers people who watch their phones who don't pay attention to traffic who are afraid to drive at higher speeds not all of them but the general population that uh, are very bad drivers with low uh, attention to traffic and uh, not even thinking when they're driving like not anticipating other drivers not thinking it's just horrible uh, just when you're too strict you're um, not really creating that much order you're just creating dumb drivers that's my personal opinion uh, I'm not for speeding but like moderate speeding is okay uh, you know adapting to the traffic to the weather conditions on the road and so on that's the thing they learn us here in Croatia and I think that's pretty much fine so I'm slowly recuperating and if I push it to B then it just slows me down and that's the way I like it it's like in a Tesla I don't have to use my brake at the end I just slightly touch it uh, before I oh, sorry before there was like a in the past model so I'm not sure if they fixed that or have or does that develop after a few kilometers on the clock hmm that's interesting I just noticed that right now that there's not that squeaky sound when you stop it was in the past model, and I think it was in the Captur as well. So maybe it develops. That's something that's an issue when it comes to irritating stuff. You should like, maybe then loop the brakes or something, I don't know. Uh, zero to 100 is like, in, I think it was eight, around eight seconds. I'm not gonna do that this time because, or should I? In fact, you are here to see that. It's not really fun for me to be honest because my car is like 4.4. .4. Not that I'm bragging, but you know, like everything like all well, seven, six is fun, six, five, and below that is like wow, it's fun. I mean, eight used to be fun for me when I had a 
10 or 11 seconds car. I mean, I forgot my first car was like maybe around 10 seconds or 11. But now this is just like, you know, not really that fun. Okay, I know you want to see this. I'm just going to go to sport. There's no one in front, no one behind. Of course, we always uh, want to uh, be the safest. Power is all the way. Release. Kicks out at 40. Someone slipped here. Um, yeah, this is the place where people like to test that. Uh, I'm doing it only for the videos. So uh, this is just for a test. I'm not driving like this, of course. But yeah, this, uh, yeah, for me, not that fun. But it isn't bad. Eight seconds is better than 10 seconds, right? Okay, there's a little uh, mist here. It's a uh, gets foggy uh, later because there's a river uh, that passes through Zagreb okay I think we can stop here and yeah let's do a little camera test so long beam wow there's a tree there okay needs to be trimmed um, and I'm gonna switch to the iPhone because the GoPro has a really bad center so it's like small it doesn't let a lot of light inside so you can't really see the greatest picture but the iPhone should give you more realistic uh, picture so this is the iPhone camera normal beam and then a long beam I think wow it seems better than the previous model but I can't really tell you'll have to watch the both videos and then compare it Now, regarding these speed limits, I suppose these are supposed to be GPS because there's no sign here, but I know for the fact that the other cars show like maybe 50, 60 here, and then this one shows 90. So the question is, if the police pulls me now, who's right? Is the speedo here? Because I thought in the other cars, I saw different speed limits. So should you can never rely on this technology in, in reality because there's always something uh, there's a lot of times what happens that, uh, you know, there's a like a lane here that's like the main avenue going like, I don't know, 70 and then there's like a pull off lane and there's a sign 50 and the, the camera picks up the 50 sign instead of the 70 and tells you on the display like you're driving in a 50 zone, which you're, you're not, you're driving in a 70. <laughs> and what's even worse, in my Tesla, uh, the camera has picked up a speed limit from a truck in front of me which had a speed limit 90 and i was in a 70 zone so interesting the car thought then it was 90. yeah technology so you always have to use your brains when driving these things um i'm mentioning this because a lot of people think you know i turn on the lane assist it's gonna keep me in the lane no it's not always gonna work like that so that's why, like Tesla says, you know, they can call it the autopilot, but you have to keep your hands on the wheel. You can let it go for like short moments, but in reality, you have to be a driver. Navigation. Uh, I was trying to type something. Let me just do this turn. Avenue. Um, Avenue Mall. Search in progress. That's it. Yep. Well, let's go. So it gives you alternate route, but there are no alternate routes here, so just go. Follow okay. the road for three kilometers. I will, but just okay, mute there. Uh, you have the turn by turn uh, voice um, yeah you can see the uh, display here and I haven't really showed but I showed it in the other video so you have here different displays you can have the navigation in front of you as well yeah okay, just not sure what's going on here okay yeah the navigation should be showing up here but uh, it's oh 
those there. So our fuel consumption is 6.7. So we're flooring it there. So there we go. Okay, I have that, but I don't have the. Oh, it's loading. But yeah, for some reason it just goes off. I mean, it was working before. Uh, I'm gonna go there. I think I need to reset the car by like turning it off and on, and then it usually helps. Because over here was supposed to be navigation as well, but. I mean, you saw it in the day review, so no harm here. Uh, you're not seeing it because it was working. I just, sometimes the technology acts up and the, probably the easiest or the first thing you should try is just rebooting this stuff. Like turn it off, wait a 10 seconds and then turn it on. And then it usually comes back on working. See, it's like trying to show it and then it like goes off. Let me just see. If Ah, doesn't matter. I thought the traffic light was going to be longer. I wanted to turn off the car and then turn it on. But sometimes you just uh, need more than a few seconds. Okay, let's do something else here. Let's drive in an EV mode. Nope, see, if you're going past 50, it doesn't want to go to EV mode. Okay, now it's EV mode and we're driving nice and quiet. Electric. Yeah, I love electric. I do prefer driving electric, it's just... Electric motors are, in my personal opinion, of course, um, better, faster, smoother. Hopefully in the future they will solve the, uh, you know, charging speeds, increase those range so we can just get rid of the electric motor. I mean the petrol motors of course uh, I mean not completely there's people who like those um, but yeah I, I, I personally prefer electric cars and just the range would be close to this and charging time that would be perfect I would never come back to petrol me personally I mean I would go drive a petrol here and there because I enjoy it, but for the feeling and the emotion it gives you, but personally, just uh, on the long time, I do prefer electric because less noise, less stress, and just smooths like a butter through the road, like this. Uh, for this, you need like a lot of power and torque and loud sounds. Wow, that's a loud. Wow, that was loud. It was like, dah, dah, I thought I was start, gonna start singing some sort of melodies. Barking card. Um, okay, we're going down. Not here, there's some guys revving their car. I don't know, they're doing something, doesn't matter. Don't care. So you can hear this humming sound. It's um, it's a sound generated for the pedestrians when you're going electric, of course. Actually, let's go one more down. I think I think we have more lights inside because this garage goes into power saving mode, but here. Actually, it's the same. Okay, we'll find a nice spot under the light here, and so you can see the car a little bit in the light. So, well, this is fine here. Let me see here. I'm gonna back up in this corner. There's a spotlight on the top and I can demonstrate the cameras so I personally like to use always the mirrors not the cameras because the wide lens distorts the picture and you can sometimes miss and hit another car it happened to me with my Tesla it was a minor scratch but still have to repaint the bumper 
uh, you know, off of the person I also scratched to paint his bumper. Luckily, he was like, I don't see it. I was like, thank God. It was a minor scratch. Um, yeah, guys, uh, this review was really, like, casual more than uh, before, maybe. Uh, before, I was, like, more, you know, focusing on the details. And over here, I, like, already tested the car, so it was, like, more relaxed. Um, yeah, once again, unlock, you can see uh, the headlights illuminate. You can see when they're on. Uh, it's a little brighter here than on the street lights. Uh, beautiful car, and I'm really not sure about this Lexus transparent tail lights. I do prefer them red. Uh, it is true that uh, the maybe the lines stand out more, but honestly. Uh, I'm a little bit worried that transparent plastic fades out through years of sun uh, and UV radiation. They just go yellow-ish and then it's going to look awful. So I would prefer uh, if they didn't do that. But, you know, it does look nice when you look at it like this and it's transparent and so on. Uh, okay, thanks for watching. Uh, pretty sure this is now a long video. Uh, hope to see you in the next one. I hope you like this video. Give it a like. Leave your comment below how do you like the new Clio uh, facelift and uh, see you in the next one. Bye.